Good evening and welcome to Rise Up with Rebecca Seawright on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright, and I have recently been appointed to a very exciting position as Chair of the Assembly Committee on People with Disabilities by Ch Speaker Carl Hasty of the New York State Assembly. The Standing Committee impacts New Yorkers with intellectual, developmental, mental, and physical disabilities, families, and caregivers. In this new leadership position, we will hear from people across the state and advocate for needed funding in the budget and legislation to improve access to critically important services, affordable housing, employment, education, high quality health care, and transportation. We will advocate for over 3 million adults and close to 500,000 children and infants with disabilities, families, and caregivers. Together with my colleagues on the committee in the assembly, we must defend and expand the rights of people living with disabilities. According to the Centers for Disease Control, disability health care costs in New York are up to 39% of health care spending in the state. State agencies designed to serve the disability community have suffered from significant underfunding and inadequate staffing for the last decade causing significant gaps in available state services. So I look forward to upcoming budget hearings to strongly advocate for expanded resources providing critical services for people with disabilities. I am joined today by a very special guest and dear friend, Dr. Chris Rosa, President and CEO of the Viscardi Center a network of nonprofits that educate, employ, and empower children and adults with disabilities. He is a staunch advocate for equity and economic justice for people with disabilities. Being a wheelchair user since age 12 has limb girdle muscular dystrophy. A published disability studies scholar, he serves in national leadership roles for organizations that promote access and wellness for Americans with disabilities. He is also a sought after orator on a variety of topics, including disability as a key dimension of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the American disability culture. Before joining Viscardi, he served as the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Inclusion Initiatives at the City University of New York, CUNY, the nation's largest public urban university system. In this role, Dr. Rosa designed and led programs that promote access, equity, and inclusion for over three for over 35,000 students who have significantly, historically, underparticipated in higher education. Dr. Rosa's higher education governance includes serving as interim vice chancellor for student affairs and the university's assistant dean for student affairs for CUNY's 25 campus system. Dr. Rosa's major accomplishments at CUNY include creating a model career readiness program for college students with disabilities that empowers them to achieve competitive employment at more than twice the national rate leading efforts to establish CUNY as a first choice college destination for neurodiverse students, launching intercollegiate inclusive athletics program and collaborating with the New York City Department of Education's District 75 to create its inclusive higher education program. He has also chaired the executive committee of the U.S. President's Committee on Employment of People with Disabilities, now known as the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy and served in leadership roles at the, roles at the New York State Independent Living Council, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, and the Society for Disability Studies. He has a bachelor's degree in philosophy, 
in sociology from Queens College, a doctorate in sociology from the CUNY Graduate Center, and he received the prestigious President's Medal from Queens College this past spring. I look so forward to our conversation today, Dr. Rosa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Assembly Member. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here with you, but even more thrilled, uh, as all we're all members of the New York State disability community, to hear that you were going to be our leader uh, as chair of the Assembly Committee on uh, for people with disabilities. You have such uh, a remarkable track record of staunch advocacy on our behalf, and we're just very grateful to have you representing our interests. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to just go over a few questions and priorities for the legislative session 2023 that we're in now. We just heard from our governor uh, with her state of the state address and her um, her investment and interest in uh, mental health. And so uh, I'd like to just lead off by having you describe the dimensions of the disability community in New York State. Oh, thank you, Assembly Member. Well, uh, as you alluded to in your really good uh, overview, uh, people with disabilities are a very significant constituency in New York State. Uh, they are they're roughly three and a half million strong. Uh, they're an extraordinarily diverse community with strong intersectional, intersectional identities um, by race and gender um, and ethnicity. Um, one thing, despite their significant nuances and differences uh, that uh, they tend to share in common is common experiences with discrimination and exclusion. Um, people with disabilities in New York State are, under, are overrepresented among low-income families because they've been routinely denied access to economic opportunities. Um, they are under participating when it comes to employment because of uh, pernicious uh, structural barriers that routinely uh, create barriers to employment for New Yorkers with disabilities. Tell us about the Viscardi Center, its mission and its impact. Sure, thank you. I've been here for a year and each and every day I arrive inspired. Um, the Viscardi Center is uh, a network of nonprofit organizations uh, that educate, employ, and empower uh, New Yorkers with disabilities and their families across the life cycle. Um, we're, we're, I think we're known for uh, being a place that provides meaningful inclusion to education and employment to New Yorkers with disabilities for whom uh, popular wisdom suggests that inclusion is not possible for them. And through our commitment to universal design, um, to inclusive education, and the scaffolding that these individuals need to become ready for competitive employment, um, we're able to defy, empower them to defy conventional wisdom and to take their rightful places in our classrooms and in the workforces of more than 300 leading employers uh, across the state. Um, one of our uh, newer uh, social enterprises um, is our digital accessibility services initiatives. And as you know better than anyone assembly member in the digital age, um, very often the, the front door to businesses or educational institutions is not simply the one on, on, the, on, on Main Street, uh, it's it's your website, and um, that has tremendous liberating potential in terms of including individuals with disabilities if they're designed in ways that are accessible for users with disabilities. But if they're not accessible, um, there's sort of an unprecedented risk of leaving New Yorkers with disabilities behind. And I'm really proud of our team's efforts to make sure uh, as partners to government, um, to nonprofits, to business and industry, to make sure that their digital resources and assets, especially their website, are fully accessible to New Yorkers with disabilities. Right, that's terrific. The Viscardi Center is uh, has such a wonderful mission and such a great impact and doing wonderful, wonderful things. Is the Viscardi Center, is it located on Long Island or where is it, is. it physically? We're, we're, thank you, we're based in Albertson, Long Island in Nassau County. 
um, but we serve individuals with disabilities from Nassau and Suffolk counties, from the five boroughs of New York City, and we even reach up into Westchester County. So we have a, a, a broad swath of catchment when it comes to impacting New Yorkers with disabilities. Great, that's terrific. What do you see as the most important issues facing children with disabilities and their families in their pursuit of a free and appropriate education in the most inclusive setting possible? Oh, thank you for that question. Um, that is sort of our hallmark. Um, uh, at the Henry Viscardi School, we are a, a publicly funded private school authorized by the New York State Education Law. And schools like ours exist because local school districts, despite their best efforts, are just mm -hmm. not adequately resourced to meet the needs of certain kids with disabilities with very intensive needs for support and, and medical care over the course of, of the school day. And so uh, the Henry Viscardi School serves kids who are medically fragile, whose only other recourse would be homeschooling. Um, and through a very robust complement of educational and support services, which includes an on-site medical suite um, with uh, physicians, physician assistants, and nurses, um, we're able to provide inclusion for those students. Um, our students participate in a standard New York State Regents curriculum. Um, they experience all the same things that typical students experience in the K through 12 um, experience. And towards that end, uh, Assembly Member, given your question, one of the things that we find is most critical is to make sure that we're able to recruit um, talented educators and retain them uh, in support of our mission. And um, right now, special educators um, in, in New York State, particularly at our private schools, are, are under, under uh, salaried. Uh, and undercompensated as compared to their peers. And that's why we've been grateful for your efforts to try to, to promote uh, parity when it comes to the way that our special educators are, are, are paid. Um, uh, the, uh, our New York City's mayor, Adams, took this uh, issue on early on. We were really heartened to see that happen in New York City, and we're hoping for comparable progress uh, with your support, of course, um, it, throughout New York State. Well, we are not going to give up until we make that adjustment and we make that right. It's unconscionable and outrageous. And uh, that's one of my top agenda items this legislative session that we're going to tackle. And uh, with your expertise, uh, Dr. Rosa, I'm sure that we will get this accomplished. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. What are the most important issues that you see facing college students with disabilities as they relate to their ability to have meaningful access to higher education? And uh, I know that you had such a wonderful impact and we were so fortunate to have you uh, as a vice chancellor at the City University of New York, uh, leading our, our public nation's largest urban institution. And uh, so talk to us a little bit about higher education and, and what we can do to strengthen it. Oh, thanks, Assembly Member. It was the joy of, of my personal and professional life. And it's, it gave me the great gift of getting to know you, uh, so for which I'm very grateful. Um, yet in New York State, there are more than 75,000 uh, students participating in post-secondary education at SUNY, CUNY, um, independent and proprietary colleges. And um, I think the one thing that all of the state's post-secondary institutions have in common is that um, while they're proud of their efforts, to accommodate and include individuals with disabilities. Um, there hasn't been a consistent investment um, by the state in the infrastructure and capacity to make sure that those students have the services and supports they need to ensure that they have equal access to all programs and curricula, um, but also to make sure that they're um, becoming ready for successful transitions from college to the world of work. Um, and so um, we've been grateful for your support uh, over the last three years for uh, a New York State Board of Regents priority. Their program is called Enhancing Supports and Services 
uh, for post-secondary students with disabilities success. And it calls for the state to make um, a $15 million investment uh, that would be uh, allocated to each higher education sector by headcount enrollment uh, of, it, of students with disabilities, uh, thereby providing the institutions that comprise those, sector, those sectors with uh, a foundation of funding that would allow them to build their capacity to make sure that students with disabilities fully participate in, in all aspects of college and university life. And what do you see are the most significant issues impacting the employment of New Yorkers with disabilities in New York State? Um, thank you for asking. Uh, one of the most significant, uh, the most significant barriers uh, that people with uh, disabilities encounter have to do with work disincentives that are tied to eligibility for critical disability benefits. There are a lot of people, uh, particularly those with physical disabilities, like me, uh, rely on home health care, personal assistance services to get up, to get dressed, and to get ready to go to work um, every day. And right now, uh, Medicaid is the chief source of funding for personal assistance services. And as you know, Medicaid is means tested. It, it, there's an asset limit that limits uh, how, the assets that you can accumulate and retain your eligibility. And so uh, a lot of people with disabilities, talented people with disabilities, opt not to go to work for fear that the income that they earn would render them ineligible for the very services they need to quite literally get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the, the governor's, uh, the governor's uh, state of the state uh, mention of a Medicaid buy-in program uh, which would lift some of the asset help in practice, lift some of the asset limits um, and and provide greater opportunity for people with disabilities to explore employment um, while retaining those key benefits um, is something that is that is really critical to New Yorkers with disabilities in in New York State. Um, on the other hand, there are some, I think, very affirming uh, elements of the governor's state of the state like to her credit, uh, establishing New York State as a model employer uh, for people with disabilities, um, seeking ultimately to uh, ensure that 77% of the New York State uh, funded workforce is comprised of qualified people with disabilities. That's a really laudable uh, aspirational goal. Um, and we were really heartened from a student's perspective to see the emphasis on a paid internship program um, for, for people with disabilities to gain critical um, human capital um, and experience necessary to make that uh, all important transition to the breakthrough first job. Fabulous, that's wonderful. And uh, yes, I wanna encourage people to apply for an internship in our office, our district office is at 1485 York Avenue, a storefront retail office between 78th and 79th. Our, our office in Albany in room 744 of the legislative office building, and we want to encourage people to apply for internships. Um, and I know that basketball, wheelchair basketball, has been a passion of yours and that you've been a coach for years. Talk to us a little bit about recreation and exercise sports. Um, I recently uh, being a pickleball player, sound, uh, read a very informative article about um, the sounds of silence oh, wow. amplified on the pickleball court, and there being the first ever uh, tournament for uh, deaf pickleball tournaments are becoming more popular around the state. It's a fantastic sport, but talk to us a little bit about you and your sure. passion for oh, basketball. Sure. Oh, no, thank you. You, you, you. It would not take much prompting, assembly member. But um, we uh, certainly, uh, you and I share uh, inclusion globally as a core value. And that, that also, uh, it's not only in terms of high stakes uh, opportunities like employment, but also really holistically nourishing opportunities like recreation, leisure, and sporting activities. Uh, our state has remarkable um, assets when it comes to recreation and leisure and sports. And we're deeply committed to make sure that New Yorkers with disabilities have equal access to participate in those. I learned that lesson richly 
through my time at the City University of New York, where we worked hard together on, um, on inclusion uh, in the classroom, but also in co-curricular uh, opportunities to make sure that students with disabilities had the same co-curricular opportunities that all other college students do. And as we know, um, in, in, uh, in colleges and universities, um, athletics are, are an important part of college community life. It's a great source of pride. Um, and so at CUNY, uh, we set out to make sure that students with disabilities had equal opportunity to participate in varsity sports, um, to proudly wear their school colors and, and represent it as they went and competed under the banner of CUNY and under the banner of, of their, their CUNY colleges. And so um, my colleague, Ryan Martin at CUNY, who is an international expert in adaptive and inclusive sports, um, launched the, the CUNY's um, varsity wheelchair basketball program. It's a men's and women basketball program. Um, and they play colleges and universities uh, from across the nation. And schools that are known for big time uh, athletics like the University of Michigan and the University of Illinois, uh, the University of Arkansas. And so our students uh, compete uh, in, in wheelchair basketball. Um, they're, they're gritty um, and they're, they're growing quickly. Uh, and mastering the sport, um, and soon they will be worthy of, of mention in the same breath of those elite programs. And I'm really proud um, of the way that they represent our state. Um, uh, the, the, um, it's important to know that they are the only uh, inclusive uh, varsity wheelchair basketball team in New York State. That's very exciting. When, when is usually the national championship game? Do you know it's, what month? It's, it's March Madness. Just March like, Madness. Just, so March Madness, the, our, our student athletes will be traveling to Texas to compete in the, in the national championships. Oh, fabulous. Where in Texas do you know? Uh, it's usually uh, Arlington. Arlington, Texas. Arlington, well, Texas. I have a, a sister who's an assistant attorney general in Fort Worth, Texas. So I oh, am wow. a native Texan and very familiar with Arlington, Texas. Um, and they have a, a place called Chicken uh, and Pickle. It's an indoor pickleball facility and they have wheelchair pickleball at Chicken and Pickle in Arlington, Texas. So wonderful. <laughs> Dr. Rosa, tell us a little bit about the Rally Day. I know you're coming to our state capitol on February 6th and on February 8th for these rallies and press conferences, and they're just so important for people around the state of New York to visit their legislators, visit uh, their, their um, executives uh, in Albany, uh, especially in the executive branch, and really let their voices be known and, and rally around these important issues and changes that we want to see. You mentioned something earlier about investment. And what we need here is a key investment and real leadership from the state to take on these tough issues and really invest the resources and pass the legislation. So talk to us a little bit about these two rally days coming sure. up in February. Um, uh, the rat, thank you very much, Assembly Member. The rally day on the 6th is really focused upon um, New Yorkers with disabilities having meaningful access to the um, to to uh, ex affordable and accessible um, home health care personal assistance services that allow people with disabilities to live as vibrant integral members of their communities that very often empower them to go to school and work um, and the rally is to make sure that um, that the the direct care workers, the home health care workers who provide that critical care are, are paid a, 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 an increasingly competitive wage that we're able to be able to retain those, those critical partners in our independent living. Um, and so uh, New Yorkers with disabilities from across the state are going to rally on the 6th uh, in, in, at, at, in the well of the legislative office building. Um, and so we hope that anybody who has a stake in this, who or who just values equity for all New Yorkers will join us on that day. On uh, February 8th, uh, the rally is by college students with disabilities. Last year in the virtual rally, we had more than 600 
students with disabilities from across the state gather together. We haven't been in person uh, for the rally in three years, and it's going to be a great uh, galvanizing moment and unifying moment for our community as we reunite um, in, in the well of the LOB uh, with your support uh, to rally uh, in support of the, the state making a $15 million investment in building the capacity of post-secondary educational institutions, uh, disability services infrastructure. Um, $15 million uh, divided among the four higher education sectors would provide a critical investment uh, that would build colleges and universities capacity to make sure that students with disabilities fully participate in all aspects of college and university life. And so um, we're, we're gonna be thrilled to be there with you um, and other members of the assembly and the Senate. Um, and we, we thank you so much for you and, and your colleagues in the assembly for creating an important fit, foothold. Um, thanks to, to you and, your, and our colleagues in the assembly and the Senate, we have uh, a $2 million foothold uh, which is an important first step in building towards the, the investment that we need. The true investment is $15 million, um, and we're looking to use that as a platform um, to secure what we need in order to provide meaningful access to New York State college students with disabilities. Fabulous. Well, we certainly look forward to these two important dates coming up and encourage all of our viewers to write your legislators to support these initiatives and, and to get involved and volunteer. As we said, this is the first time the Capitol has been fully opened uh, since COVID. And so we're going to be hearing this rallying cry all throughout the halls and chambers of our state Capitol. This has been such an informative discussion, and I want to thank Dr. Chris Rosa, President and CEO of the Viscardi Center, for joining us today and sharing your expertise and scholarship with us. I hope our viewers will consider our office as a resource. Visit us in Albany to lobby us on some of the issues that you've heard about today, uh, or stop by our district office at 1485 York Avenue. We're right next to the post office between 78th and 79th Street. We have our no-cost housing legal clinic and free notary service. Uh, so please stop in and say hello. And thank you for tuning in today to Rise Up with Rebecca Seawright on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you. Thank you.